Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna just kind of relax a little bit more. It's not a tutorial. Today, we're gonna just, we're gonna unbox something. We're gonna unbox the Cricut Explore 3. Now, this sucker right here, let me just show it to you. It's such a big box. I actually bought this uh, about a year ago or sometime last year when it came out and I've never opened the box. I've been meaning to open it, but I wanted to do it with you guys. So today we're gonna do that. And what I wanna do is I wanna set it up, but specifically what I wanna play with on this machine today is how we can use the Cricut Explore 3 to cut out vinyl for our bag projects. Now, some of you might know I do have a Cricut Maker, not, not three, but I do have a Cricut Maker. And the Cricut Maker is really nice because you can use a rotary attachment. And so it's like, it's like a little rotary blade. Like here, let me, this is a rotary cutter. It has like a little mini one. And that's fantastic for cutting out fabric because you really need a rotary blade to cut out the fabric. However, not really great for cutting out the vinyl. Vinyl's a little thicker. It has like a rubbery substance. There's like a rubbery layer and then like a fleecy layer. You know, you can have all these different types of layers. And I've seen many people use their crickets to cut out pattern pieces for bags with vinyl, which is fantastic. And I've also seen people use their Cricut Maker to cut out applique designs. Now, when I'm talking about vinyl, I'm not talking about heat transfer vinyl or the sticky vinyl. I'm specifically talking about bag making vinyl, the stuff we use all the time in our bags. So nothing that you have to heat or stick, nothing like that. So that's what we're gonna try today. We're gonna open up this box, we're gonna set it up, and we're gonna just play with cutting out some vinyl. <laughs> So if you're new to the Oak Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. No timestamps today. This is just a relaxed day. It's a relaxed for funsy unboxing day. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm just gonna open up this box. What do you guys think of the new camera? I got a new camera and a new lens. So you, you see more over here. What do you guys think of it? What do you think of the new camera? We like it. All right, so just opening up the box right away, it says, you were born creative. Well, that's fun. So inside we have this envelope right here. You open that up and it looks like, oh, it gives you some stuff. So I, I wonder if this, so it says, let's get started, activate your machine, all right. And then it looks like we've got some vinyl and warranty information. So my preview at Cricut Maker, uh, whenever that came in, there was like, material for a project. So I had you do a whole project. Like a, there was cutting out paper, vinyl, a pen, all this stuff. So, okay, so in here we've got some more material. So it's smart paper. Okay, that's this whole thing, isn't it? So the Cricut, the Cricut Explore 3, it's like smart. I gotta be completely honest, if you wanna know all the ins and outs and technical aspects of this machine, this is not gonna be the video for that. I just wanna know how to use this machine to complete a task that I wanna do. Right, um, eventually maybe I'll learn all the smart paper, smart features, uh, but not today. Okay, okay, oh my, oh my goodness, it's okay. Nothing, nothing broke, everything's fine. Okay, so let's open this up. I know the lighting isn't great on the side camera, I apologize. It's a really, really pretty color. I don't know if you can, so I know with like the other crickets, like my Cricut Maker, we can pick the colors like of the top. I don't think that there's other color options for this. At least there wasn't when I ordered it. There might be now. Like I said, this is a casual, casual day, guys. Casual day. I am no cricket expert. We're gonna learn together. Ooh. It's so slow. I feel like I'm so like it's like a, like a car show, you know, where like the car's slowly rotating so you can see all of it, it like slowly opens up. That's cute, I like it. So then there's two holder things here. I, will, I only use one, but we've got two. And then it looks like there's a little storage thing here. Another storage thing, a little storage thing over here. There we go, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so I don't remember if this came as a bundle with anything else, but just on in the box, this is what it is. There's no tools, there's no scrapies or swipies or slideies or anything like that. It's, it's just the maker and then it does give you some material to play with. 
but we're not going to be using that material today unless we have to for setup. Okay, so then we have the cord that connects from the Explore to your computer. We're going to use that. I believe these are wireless as well. I don't use that. My wireless in my house is pretty iffy, so I don't I don't use that feature on any of them. And then we have the cord for power. Power cord. So I'm going to go plug this in real quick and we're going to see what we got to do. Okay, so I have the Cricut plugged into power. I'm going to plug it into my laptop. I do want to show you. I am using an Apple laptop and because Apple laptops nowadays don't have the little USB drive, I also have a dongle. <laughs> and a dongle just allows me to plug in these cords into my computer. The other piece of equipment that I have in addition to the maker is a Cricut strong grip thing. Does this come with a blade? How the heck do you open this thing? Oh, it does. Okay, it comes with a it comes with a blade. Okay. I think that's the blade we want. We'll see. But back to what I was saying, we also have the strong grip mat, which is what we want today because we need we need the vinyl to really stick and we'll go over that. And then I'll show you the vinyl I'm using as well. We're gonna use a few different types of vinyl to see how they cut. So I'm just gonna plug this into the back of the machine and I'm gonna open up my laptop and plug it into my laptop. Okay, so the software I use is Cricut Design Space. I do believe with Cricut, like that's what you have to use. You have to download Cricut Design Space. There are no options to use something else as far as I know. I mean, there might be a way to hack it, but that's not anything I know how to do. Uh, I don't have a problem with Cricut Design Space. I upload all my own stuff and then just use it to send it to the machine. So I'm pretty okay with the software, honestly. I feel like it's pretty intuitive. So I'm just gonna turn on my machine. Now one thing you should know about me is that I have no patience <laughs> and I like to just kind of make it work. I like to just plug and go, plug and glow, go. So that's what I'm gonna kind of try to do today. Um, you know, let's see how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna click on new project. And here is my space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put in a really easy design, like a star, star's a good design. So I'm just gonna go over here to the left and click shapes. And then I'm gonna click the star. And then I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it like two inches by two inches. And if I wanna make it exact, I can go up to my size and just click two inches up here. Eh, that's fine. So now I'm gonna go over to make it and it's going to just automatically put it where I want it. That's fine. We'll play with more shapes in just a little bit. I'm going to click continue. It says, please connect your maker. Okay, select Cricut Explore 3. You selected a different machine than the one you used on Canvas. Change on Canvas. Okay. Yes, cancel the cut. So that's interesting. So I guess I have to select something on the Canvas? What? Okay, so when you go to your Canvas, you apparently you're supposed to pick your machine there. Okay. There we go. I changed that. Now we're going to go to make it. Uh, on a mat. Oh, so that's the thing with this, isn't it? You don't have to use a mat. Okay. So I'm using the Cricut Explore 3 because I have it. Um, you don't need the Explore 3, if, if you're using it for what I'm using it for. Now, if you want to do the whole matte list, cut big things on your sticky vinyl, then, then yeah, for sure, I'm sure this is great for that. But specifically what I'm doing today is I'm trying to figure out how to use this machine for bag making. So, it doesn't have to be the Explore 3, it could be just a Cricut Explore. Um, I would say if you're only using the machine for bag making, definitely go with the most affordable option for you. Um, but let's move on. On mat, okay, continue. And then continue. Now we gotta wait for it to find it. I have it connected. Machine update, all right. Well, we, I assume that would happen since it's a brand new machine and it's been in a box for a year. So let's update the machine. And then we're gonna reboot the machine. Fantastic. Okay, so while we wait for the machine to update and reboot, let me just show you some of the material we're gonna try this out on today. First, simple material like cork. This is just a nice layer of cork. Um, it doesn't have anything sticky on it. It doesn't have any sort of fabric-y. I mean, it's just very, very simple. A nice, simple, simple thing to cut. We're gonna try that. And then we're gonna also try some shiny vinyl. So you can see this is like very, very shiny. 
The back of it is like this fleecy feel. So we're gonna try that. And then I also have some thicker vinyl. And this has like a nice thick plasticky coating. And then it just has just a regular kind of canvasy backing. Ooh, the machine's doing some. All right, update successful, continue. I did connect it. I don't know now, it tells me to connect the Explore 3, but it is connected. That's how you updated it. You updated it. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want free gifts. I don't want that right now. Okay, there we go. It's all loaded up. Alrighty, so I like that setup. I didn't have to like go through a whole thing. I'm sure you're supposed to and like do the warranty and everything. I'll get to that later. I am, I don't, I don't have time for that right now. So let me cut out, we're gonna cut out the star from the cork first. Now let me just make sure it's big enough. Yeah, it should be big enough. Okay, so we gotta set some favorites. So this is what I use on my maker. Let's see if it will work on the Explore as well. So I'm gonna browse all material and I wanna go to fabric, faux leather paper thin. And I'm going to, I'm gonna favorite that as well so I don't have to look for it every single time I come on here. That's something that I kind of learned the hard way over many months is that if you click that little star, it'll add that setting to your favorites so that if you're just doing the same thing over and over again, you can just keep selecting it. You don't have to go look for it every time. So we're gonna select that and click done. And you can see that requires the fine point blade. The fine point blade is what comes in the machine, I think, so we should be good. So the next step is actually just loading the mat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mat here I'm gonna lift up the plastic coating. And we always take our material and we lay it pretty side down. So for vinyl, um, it's gonna be the shiny side. For cork, it's gonna be the pretty side. And it's pretty much because this backing here is super fuzzy. And if you put that backing down on your mat, it's just gonna stick and you can clean it. I know, uh, it, 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 no, no, we're not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna stick this right on my mat and hopefully I'm covering the whole area. And you can see on the mat here, it has grid marks, so you can see two inches by two inches. And what you can do is go over to your computer, hover over the star, and just make sure, you can see it goes down a little bit past the two inch, it goes a little bit to the left of the two inch. Okay, so we should be good. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my mat and I'm gonna load it into my machine by just sliding it under the little pegs on the sides. And then I'm gonna click this little flashing arrow button right here. Cords back there. Let's see. All right, so I guess it evaluated my mat. <laughs> now I'm gonna push the play button. And now we wait and see if it does anything. Okay. Okay, so I didn't adjust the pressure or anything like that. I just had to go. It looks like it's doing two rounds. Okay. Okay, so it did two passes. Now I don't know if I set that. I'll have to re review that and see if that's just a standard part of the setting. So it looks like it just spit it out on its own as well. So you can see this is what we have here. And let's just try taking the cork off. Oh yeah, that cut it really nicely. See? And now we have this nice little star. Look how cute that is. Isn't that sweet? It's a little cork star. I love that. Why is it that cutting things out so neatly just makes me happy? Maybe it's because I have to cut out so many things that are small with scissors and I don't like doing it. I like that. Okay, so first round, we didn't really have to do anything. We just picked the certain you know type and just stuck it in the machine and got going. So success. First attempt, two thumbs up. So now we're gonna try the shiny vinyl and we're gonna try a more intricate design. So here's the thing, when you're using this for bag making, for pattern pieces, if you're making a bag, you're probably not gonna have any very, very intricate cuts to make for the bag, right? We're gonna have rectangles, we're gonna have some curves, we're gonna have some little corners, but we're not gonna have like really fine, fine details, right? Because, how, because you gotta sew it. 
And so I'm not going to be showing you any bag patterns today. Also, because if a designer does provide the SVG in order for me to show it to you, it's going to give away a lot of the measurements and I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm actually just going to pick more intricate cuts and we're going to see how well we can cut this material with really tight little nooks and crannies. You know what I mean? And what that will show us is that if it can do that, then it can obviously do the bigger, rounder, rectangular cuts as well. Uh, one of the things that's nice about those more intricate cuts with bag making is that you can actually take material like this and let's say you wanted to cut out a pumpkin or a dress or a castle, something like that, and you wanted to applique it on top of your bag. Well, you can use your Cricut for that. You can have the Cricut cut out the really intricate design and then you can glue it onto the top panel of your bag and then use your sewing machine to just kind of gently go around the edges and, and, and sew it on in place, which I think is a really cool feature that we're gonna play more with this year. So let's go in here and find some other projects. So I'm gonna go over here down to the upload button and I'm gonna upload some of my own stuff. So you can see I have some fun designs on here that I've been playing with. You see that as Miss Minutes, that's funny, isn't it? Um, I feel like that castle is gonna be a little too much. This is a this is a little zip wallet thing I was playing with, but I feel like it's too easy. We need something in between that wallet and that castle. So let me go to my computer and see if I can find something. All right, so I picked out a design that's a little more intricate than I would probably applique onto a bag, but let's give it a shot, okay? We're gonna do this beautiful sewing machine. So let's upload that. And then we click it and click add to canvas. I don't have my glasses on, so it's kind of hard for me to read this. All right, so that's really big. That's 12 inches by eight inches, which is bigger than what I have here. So we're gonna try to cut it down to, let's see, let's see. Let me cut down my vinyl and see what we can do here. It's gonna have to be pretty small. So, we're gonna see if we can cut this image out so that it is about, ooh, about six inches What We're gonna, ooh, let's see what that is. Okay, we're gonna change the width to six inches. Click enter, and it's gonna change the height to a little over four inches. So let me make sure that will work. That will work. So my cut right here is about, it's a little over six inches by five inches. So this should work. Oh, we're gonna see how this goes. Okay, so just like we did before, I'm going to lay my material pretty side down so that soft fluffy side is on the top and I'm just gonna line it up right in the top left of my mat and I give it a little press down like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my computer and I'm just gonna click make it. I have it the size I want. I have it less than six inches wide. Oh, I think we're gonna be okay. Let's click make it. And we're gonna say it's on a mat continue and this looks good it's a little bit past six inches over on the right and it's a little bit past four inches so there we're gonna be cutting it close here on the six inch part but we'll see okay then we're gonna click continue now we just have to wait for it to find the machine it's plugged in so it shouldn't take so long okay so it found it. It does take it does take a few seconds to find the machine, which I don't feel like my maker has that issue, but that's fine. Okay, so remember we favorited the faux leather last time, so now it's just right there. We don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to click on it, and if you want to kind of take a look at it more, you can definitely do that. So let's go back up here to the faux leather, and you can see I have pressure to default. Now, if I'm using really thick stuff, I can always increase the pressure to more or decrease the pressure to less. I think I'm okay with default. What I'm wondering is the double pass it seems like so let's let's just take a look let's go to browse all material and we're gonna go down here to material settings so now when we go to material settings we can scroll down to our faux leather paper thin and you can see right here it says two times that means it's gonna do two passes and if you don't want it to do that you can click on edit so it tells you the blade to use it tells you all the information but you can click on edit and you can say uh, no no two passes just one pass I only want one pass and right here it looks like that's the pressure so you can say more pressure less pressure but we're gonna work with that in the front end so I'm gonna say only one pass not two passes because my worry is is if the blade goes over the areas more than once it might start kind of shredding 
my vinyl. Now, it might not. It definitely did not have a problem with the cork. Let's just try this. This, this is an experimenting day. Let's try it for this. Okay, so I'm going to click Save. So now my faux leather, paper thin, off, which means it's not going to do more than one pass. It's just going to do one pass. Okay, sounds good. So now let's go back to our faux leather paper thin and on pressure, I'm going to say more pressure. So I only want to do one pass, but I want to push down more just to make sure it gets through all the layers. We've got like a fuzzy layer and then we've got more of a rubbery layer and I really want to make sure it goes through all of them. So now we're going to go to the load materials tools. Okay. So once again, we're just going to slide this under the notches of our Cricut Explore and then click the little arrows here. I'm going to move my cord. And you can see it pushes it all the way through and then all the way back. So don't have your Cricut right up against a wall. I, I've done that a lot where I just take my machine, I stick it right up against a wall. It's just going to bang against that wall. See, it needs clearance on the back. So once it examined it, I guess it's approved it. And now we're going to click the play button. And we wait. Go so fast. I really, I'm really not sure this is going to work out. If it doesn't work out, we'll do it again and we'll try the two passes instead of just the one pass. I will tell you this, it, it definitely cuts really fast. I mean, I feel like it cuts faster than my maker. So that's cool. All right, it's all done. So now I'm gonna click the flashing arrows to say, spit it out. All right, moment of truth. Are you guys ready? This is what we have. And I'm just gonna take the corner here. Oh, I'm so nervous that it's not gonna, it's not gonna come off. Okay, hello. Look at that. Oh, all those. Okay, I'm pretty impressed by that. Okay, so then we have a centerpiece here. I'm gonna pull that out as well. Oh my goodness. I mean, you can see we definitely have some nooks and details, some really tiny pieces, which again, if you're using like a heat transfer vinyl or a sticky vinyl, thinner material that's meant to be cut into teeny tiny little pieces, that's like not a big deal, but we're using sewing material, you know, thicker vinyl that's really not meant to be cut into teeny tiny little pieces like that. So now I'm gonna see if I can remove this without damaging anything. Alrighty, so check that out. Isn't that cool? Well, I'm a fan, that's fun. So now what we could do, like I said, is you can like spray the back of it with some spray glue. And then if you had another piece of vinyl, let me just grab this. So let's say you had a cut of vinyl for your bag, you know, a rectangular cut for the front of your bag. You can spray this with some glue, stick it on, and then take that to your sewing machine and super slowly stitch right around the edge of that sewing machine to applique it on. And you don't have to worry about tracing anything and then cutting it, because you know when you cut it with scissors, it's not gonna be perfect. But that's a pretty dang, and that would be, a, with these two together, that would be a cute bag, huh? I might have to save this for that project. All right, so tip number two worked out great. Here's one thing I want us to look at, though. Let's see if you can see on the mat. The pressure might have been too much for what I was doing. So if you look at the mat, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the like scoring marks on the mat from that sewing machine. But you can also see it from all my other projects as well. So yeah, well, we're gonna say that's fine. All right, so we're gonna stick with that sewing machine and we're gonna try two more materials. Well, we're gonna stick with that sewing machine and try one more material. So the next material I wanna try is this, this here, because this is a little thicker than the material we just played with. It has some layers to it. So I'm just gonna cut another piece that is, a, is bigger than four inches by six inches. All right, so I have another piece of material here and it is bigger than my four by six. I don't have to go back into the canvas and redesign everything. I can just say, like, let's make it again, right? So I believe I can, let's try this. On my other machine, I can just run this again without having to do anything. So let's give it a try. I'm just gonna put this down again, right side down on my mat. And I just want to make sure it's covering the area 
that I needed to cover. All right, so I'm gonna keep the exact same settings that I kept for that shiny purple vinyl. Now let me see if this does anything. I'm gonna insert this and push the arrow button. It looks like it's gonna feed it again. Can I push the play button? All right, so it doesn't look like it's gonna let me do that. On my maker, what I can do is once I'm done with one job, I can just put stuff on the mat, put it right back on the machine, push play, and it'll do it all over again. It doesn't look like it's gonna let me do that. So I'm gonna click done on the screen, and then I'm gonna go and click make it again. Now this time, let's do it a little differently. So again, I'm gonna do on the mat, continue. Now you can see my machine came out like this, which is opposite of how my machine actually is. My machine is more like, like this, right? When I sit at the machine, oh, when I sit at the machine, it's like this to me. So like this to you, right? The needle part to me is on the left. But when I look at this on the right side, the needle part is on the right. So what do we wanna do is we wanna mirror it. So what we can do before we cut it is that we can go, okay, on the mat, got it. And there's a little button here that says mirror. We're gonna click that. Now it's mirrored. So that way, because we're putting our material right side down, we need it to flip the other way. You know what I mean? So just think about it. If you're not looking at the pretty side, it's going to be the opposite of what you have it cut. So if the pretty side is down, you gotta mirror it. If the pretty side is up, don't mirror it. And once and again, it's gonna say, please connect your... So that's a little, a little bit of a bother for me. Because especially for me, I have a tendency to use my Cricut maker to kind of like cut out a lot of different material back to back to back. It's the same cut, just a lot of material. Uh, so the fact that I have to kind of start from this every time and it has to look for it and it takes a few seconds to find it. I don't know about that. So I'm going to go to favorites. It removed my favorites for some reason. So let's go. Maybe it's because I changed the settings of my fabric. So we're gonna go to faux leather paper thin and again, click that. I might have accidentally unclicked the star, who knows. Uh, and you know what I wanna do before we start? I wanna go see if it changed my double pass change or not. So let's let's do that real quick. We're gonna go to browse all materials, material settings, scroll on down to faux leather paper. Okay, so it still says faux leather paper thin off. Good. I was kind of worried it would have like removed my, I only want a single pass setting. But it didn't. Okay. Now I'm with tools. Okay, so now we can see on the machine over here the light is blinking, meaning it's ready to cut something. Okay. I wonder if there's a setting in there so you can just say like I'm gonna keep cutting the same thing over and over again. Don't make me go back to the canvas. I'll have to figure that out. So I'm gonna click that. And the machine is going to analyze my material. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Okay, and once it's good, just gonna click play. We're gonna, we're gonna let it go. It's really fast, <laughs> really, really fast. So let's, let's try this one. I'm gonna do the same thing with you guys. I'm gonna peel it off just like this. Oh no, it didn't cut all the way. See, you know what? I didn't click more pressure, did I? I only clicked Huh. Okay, and this time, since I have my favorite set and I can click on it again, it looks like I can run it again. So I'm gonna cut another piece because I wonder, this time I just left it at default pressure instead of more pressure. And you can see on the back, I don't know if you can see, but it did cut a layer on the back, but it did not cut the front. Let's try another piece. Okay, so I have another piece of material here. I'm gonna lay it down. And that's good to know. It's just because, so it seems like the only reason I couldn't cut it just again and I had to go back to the canvas was because I didn't select my material. Duh. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back to my material real quick and I'm gonna click pressure, more, more pressure. Single pass, more pressure. Thicker, thicker material. Let's see. We'll see if this one works, I hope it does. So I'm just gonna insert it in again. Click my arrows. It's still mirrored and everything, right? Looks like it. I'm nervous now. Okay, let's try it, ready? 
again it didn't it didn't cut it I mean it's it wanted to it's almost cutting it so you know what I'm gonna actually just keep it down I'm not gonna move it I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna run it a second time I'm gonna run it a second time because that would have been similar to a double pass and then we might do this another time with another thick piece of vinyl and just do double pass and see how that works. Cause I want this to work. I want it to work on all of our vinyl. So let's try this. I know some of you guys know how to do this. So I'm sure you've already commented down below all the things I'm doing wrong, which I appreciate. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna click more pressure. And so I'm running this a second time. So this would be similar to if I had it run twice. It's not exact. Um, it is possible that my alignment is a little bit off since I took it out of the machine and put it back in. I guess we'll just we'll just have to see, huh? So let's see if a second pass cuts through that final layer. All right, let's see if that let's see what that did. Ugh, I'm nervous. Still, I mean, it started cutting it. It cut some of it. So let's let's just see. Let's just take it off. Okay. I mean, it did cut some of it. So let's see if we can kind of just pull it off. So you can see some of it's falling off now. It did cut some of it. There are just some areas where, I mean, it, it did cut it because so, I'm able to just separate it. Oh, but there, yeah, there are some areas there where it's a little bit tricky to separate. And then let's do in here. There we go. And see, the thing is, it's not so much the thickness of the material, it's that top coat. This one turned out really cute though. I mean, you see that? Can you see? That's still a really, really cute little machine and I love the placement of that coffee cup. I'm definitely going to use this. That's adorable. And so I do have some little areas that are a little fuzzy because it, I did kind of have to pull it. Okay, okay, let's try another one. I'm gonna try one more. I'm gonna try one more at the double cut setting with higher pressure. This is still really cool though. You know what, I was gonna get some other material. I'm just gonna use the same material because this is the one that seems to be the most challenging and it's such fun material. And I'm gonna use it on a bag. I'm excited about that. Okay, so I have another cut of material. I cut it a little wonky, so I'm not quite sure. You see here how the material is going off the side. You definitely do not want that because these sides rub right against the machine. If you have material going off of it, it just snags it up and bunches it up. It's a mess. I've done it more than a few times. All right, so I've got another piece on here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Browse All Materials, Material Settings. And let's see. I'm gonna go to the Faux Suede option. So my Faux Leather Paper Thin, that cut setting I have right now where it's a single pass, it works really, really well with cork and thinner vinyl and stuff like that. But what I wanna do is I wanna create another one that would work a little bit better with thicker vinyl like this. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna to go to the faux suede setting and click edit. We want it to use the fine point blade and we want a two time pass. And this one already has a pressure of 250, whereas the faux leather paper thin had a pressure of 215. So I'm assuming more pressure, bigger number, more pressure. That's what we're gonna assume. So I'm just gonna leave it. I could always increase it to say like, hey, I, I, I mean it, I need you to cut through this stuff, but I'm gonna leave it. So I'm gonna click save. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get out of custom materials and I'm gonna go browse all materials, fabric, and I'm gonna find my faux suede one and I'm gonna favorite that. Okay, done. Now, I'm gonna go to faux suede and then I'm gonna click more pressure. Now let's load it up. All right, now let's click play. Did it do two passes? Did you guys see it do two passes? I think it did. All right, let's take it off. No. I don't think it did two passes. Did you guys see it do that? This is a little frustrating. I definitely had that faux suede mark as a favorite and it is not on here anymore. <laughs> I'm a little frustrated with the front end right now. Let me go check on this. See, I marked it as a favorite. Let me go to material settings. Let me see if it saved my material settings. 
Yeah, it did. It says two times. I'm going to make it a favorite again. Go back out here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to run it again. Maybe, maybe I didn't select it before. I'm going to run it again. We got to make this work. stopped working. <laughs> Why did it stop working? You okay? So I'm, I'm a little stumped right now. It's, it says it's done cutting and it stopped, but it is not, it is not allowing me to take it out of the machine. I might, I wonder if it's jammed or something. I'm going to power it off real quick. I'm just going to forcefully take it out. That's a little, that's a little iffy. So I haven't researched a whole lot about the Cricut Explore 3 stuff or the Cricut Maker 3 stuff, but I have seen some people mention that it's a little finicky. So I would say if you're in the market for a Cricut, the Cricut Explore, not the 3, but the Cricut Explore, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I'm assuming that is like the most affordable option. I'll put a, I'll put some prices on the screen here. Um, get that. <laughs> but by doing that, we did have this come off really nicely. Look at that. So that definitely worked. Look at that. So to be completely honest, I'm not sure if I did four passes or two or three passes on this one because the setting might have been a little wonky, but look how cute that is. Isn't that awesome? I love these. Okay, here's the thing guys. We got to get it right on one try. So we're going to try one more time, same material, one more time on the faux suede setting that I changed so that it does two passes with a firmer pressure. And I'm going to see if I turn this machine back on, if it will work again, because it was not happy with me. All right. So once again, I'm going to load my material on here. And for anybody worried that I'm wasting material, do not worry. All of these scraps are going to be used. These machines I'm cutting out, I do have project ideas for all of these. Uh, maybe I'll do, if you guys like, I can do a whole tutorial on how to top stitch such fine details like this onto um, a panel for your bag. We can definitely do that. I will be using all of them as well as the little scraps around the machine. I can cut those into little bits and bobs. There's no waste here, so don't worry. <clears throat> so let's go back to the computer and let's see if it's saved. The faux suede as a favorite. Okay, faux suede is saved as a favorite. I've already confirmed that it does two passes. I'm gonna click pressure more again, and I'm gonna load this up. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see if it's gonna work in one go. It's gonna do two passes, but I don't wanna have to take it out of the machine and put it back in. Ooh, we'll see. If you have to do that, take it out of the machine, put it back in, have it run again, it's still going to work out great. You know, that's what, I mean, I've had to do that, and these are still beautiful, so it's not the end of the world. We just, we like simplicity here, right? I'm a fan of simple. I love simple things. Let's try it again. All right, didn't have any problems that time. Let's take it out. Oh yeah, it worked. Fantastic. All right. So there we go. There we go. We're going to, we're going to end on that one because you should always quit when you're ahead, right? Always end on a good shot. So I'm going to take out the middle. Okay. Beautiful. Perfect. Love it. Okay. So by adjusting that setting, again, we use the faux suede and we changed it so we do a double pass and we've got a perfect cut here. Perfect. Perfect cut. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. I like that so much. That makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, so I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I know I was very confused when I was trying to figure out how to do this. 
Some of the things I just really want you guys to remember is that if you get either an Explore 3 or a Cricut Explore, or I think even a Maker, I'm pretty sure they all come with the same fine point blade. It's just the standard Cricut blade. So you don't have to buy anything special. You don't have to buy a knife blade or a rotary blade, nothing like that. Uh, so I do like the simplicity of that. Just from my own experience, I do suggest the strong grip mat. I know that plenty of other people use the regular grip mats. Um, the strong grip just it, for my stuff, it works a little bit better. One thing I do want to note with this Explore 3 is that it did not come with a mat. Now, I don't remember if the other ones did, but this did not come with a mat because instead it comes with that smart material. Like it's called smart paper, you see, um, which I'm not really going to. I mean, I'll probably use it eventually, just not not in the near future. Uh, so you might have to go and invest in a mat, but but get the most affordable option. If you're just if you're just going to use it for cutting out panels for your bags, for cutting out applique vinyl for your bags, you're really not into like all the crafty, crafty, crafty stuff. Um, definitely get the most affordable option, the Explore whatever, and then get yourself a strong grip mat, and then you should be good to go. You don't need to mess with the blades or anything like that. I also think one of the most important things to kind of play around with are the material settings. And I know a lot of us, when it comes to software, it's just like, I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to touch it. You know, like I'm not, I don't mess the settings. I don't mess with the settings on my computer. I don't mess with settings on anything. They are what they are. And I feel like if I'm going to mess with it, I'm going to break it. And I'm right there with you. I totally, totally understand. Uh, but these ones you can. And the nice thing is, is if you do start finagling with those settings and it gets all kinds of wonky and crazy, you can always just go and just click reset and it will reset it back to what it's supposed to be like that. I do wish that, I mean, maybe we can, I do wish we could rename some of the cuts. So like I said, I could put like, use this for cutting cork, use this for cutting thin vinyl, use this for cutting that really beautiful thick vinyl, you know? Um, I do wish that, but for now, I'm just gonna have to remember like faux suede, I have the settings for the thicker vinyl and then the other one is for the thinner vinyl. So thanks so much for sticking around with me. If you have a Cricut, let me know what you use it for. Do you do other crafts as well? I wanna do all the crafts, to be honest. I would love to get into paper crafts and then cutting out sticky vinyl to put on cups. That actually is a plan for the summer. We're gonna, we're gonna do some cups this summer. If you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do consider clicking that subscribe button down below. If you wanna see more Cricut videos, let me know. I think there's a lot we can do with this in the bag room, <laughs> in the bag room, in the sewing room when we make our bags. I think we can I think we can have a lot of fun with the Cricut. I know I am definitely using it for a lot of options. If you're into embroidery, this is actually a really, really great device to pre-cut your embroidery designs before you stitch on them so you don't have to cut them out in the end. If you're interested in that, let me know. We can go over that and how I've been doing that lately. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. <music>